Well, I have my favorite little myth is, is that the human consciousness began when this little group of hominids were running across the desert and one of their leaders fell dead. And they began performing a little circle around this event. Uh, and while they were doing this circle, one person on one side of the circle looked into the eyes of somebody on the other side of the circle and realized that this circling stood for this experience of loss. That was the first liturgy, and we, we added language and, and art uh, to elaborate it, and humanity began. Well, I think mythology has, has been confused because people think mythology has to mean uh, worlds of gods and angels and, and devils and evil spirits and good spirits. And, in other words, the two-story worldview mythology is what mythology is, and everything else is something else. But mythology is just simply story, just any kind of story that accesses the spirit depths. And it may not have these supernatural elements in it. And even when it does have these supernatural elements in it, you must think of it as just a story. This was just the way that people for thousands of years storied, was, was talking about their depth interior life with these fantasy figures of angels and devils and so forth. But, but you don't understand at all what they were doing if you don't see that those were just symbols for things that were actually happening in their lives. So for we modern people who f find that too easy to literalize, we have to think of ways of speaking what we might call existentially or phenomenologically uh, about, it, about those stories or write new stories that, that, that are uh, not uh, flawed, as you might say, with that uh, old two-story uh, way of thinking about it, uh, that actually say the same thing uh, to us about our interior life as the old two stories do. And once you've done a little bit of that kind of translating back and forth, that opens up for you the whole of history. You, you can then see that whether well, they were Greeks talking about uh, uh, Aphrodite or whether they were Buddhists or Hindus or Christians talking about devils and, and God, uh, they were talking about the same thing you can talk about in other ways uh, through phenomenological and existential language today. Something like that is, 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 is the key, I think, is, is getting people to realize there wasn't anything wrong with these people that had this two-story language. That was just their way of talking. But it is not our way of talking anymore, and it's really not even a good way of talking when we take it literally. It means that we don't really have any grasp of what they were doing with it, and we're not doing anything with it that, 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 that's, that's not just foolishness. So you've got to translate in order to understand and appreciate these great ancient saints, as well as appreciate yourself as a saint on the same level as they were. They don't have any magic we don't have. They, they were just talking about their lives with their language. Now we're talking about our lives with our language, and we can have this communication across the centuries.